Welcome to Structure Fishing. I'm Jim Shell. This is part four of the Structure Fishing Workshop Structure. We're going to clear up and tell you what structure really is. Unfortunately, 75 to 95 percent of the time, the term structure is used incorrectly. We turn on a t uh, TV, we watch a fishing show, or we turn on YouTube and watch a, a fishing channel, and these guys misuse the word structure so much. We're going to clear up what structure really is. Now, you know, people will you watch a show and they'll pull up to a dock and they'll say, boy, look at that dock. What a nice looking structure. They see a big stump in the water. And but boy, what a great structure this stump is. They see a big weed bed and they tell you, boy, we're going to fish this weed bed. This is a great structure, this weed bed. I was given a seminar at a muskie club many years ago and one of the breaks one of the guys told me that his favorite type of structure was a living structure. I, was, I had to ask him, what is a living structure? He said, a school of bait fish. <laughs> the, the, the pier is not structure. The weed bed is not structure. The stump is not structure. And by all means, the school of bait fish is not structure. Structure is, and here's what Buck says again, Structure is the shape or features of the bottom that is different from the surrounding bottom area, period. Let me read that again. It's the shape or features of the bottom that is different from the surrounding bottom area. Buck Perry is the one that coined the word structure, breaks and break lines. Buck is the one that gave them their original definition and meaning. If He is the father of structure fishing. His definition again is, it's the shape or features of the bottom that is different from the surrounding bottom area. The word bottom is used in there twice to tell you that structure is the bottom of the lake that is different from the surrounding area. The pier is not the bottom of the lake. The uh, stump is not the bottom of the lake. The weeds aren't the bottom of the lake. And the school of bait fish is not the bottom of the lake. Structure is the shape or features of the bottom of the lake that is different from the surrounding area. And that's how Buck coined the words. That's the definition he gave the word structure. All right. Now we look at a contour map, and this is a pretty basic contour map. Actually, most contour maps up until recent times within the last 10 years or so pretty much look like this. You can look at this contour map and get a general idea where you might have some structures. Features of the bottom different from the surrounding area. You can see one part of the lake here looks like you got a bar over here. You can see that you may have some humps in another part of the lake. Uh, but nowadays we have uh, pretty accurate uh, uh, maps are getting more and more accurate. Like this map here where you can really see uh, the structure where the structures are at and what they look like. Once again, it's the bottom of the lake different from the surrounding areas. Now, we're very fortunate that we live in a time now where, you know, technology is, is advancing and it's showing up in our fishing world now where we've got great electronics now to really give us an idea what the bottom of the lake may, or what the bottom of the lake looks like. We've got contour maps that we can go out and look online or purchase to, in, in most cases give us a pretty accurate thing. Uh, the uh, new depth finders now have features where you can actually create your own co accurate contour map while you're fishing. We have a lot of tools available for us to help us look at structure and understand structure a lot better. But we have to understand what structure is first so we know how to fish it and how fish use structure. All right, now as we said in the definition, the structure is a shape of the bottom that is different from the surrounding area. And that shape is created by a break line. And a break line is a place or a line on the bottom where it, there is a more rapid increase or decrease in depth. Uh, to give you a this line there, uh, where you have an increase in depth. And as the word suggests, line, break line, it doesn't happen in one spot, but it's a line. Of course, this line may not be straight or continuous. It may curve to the right or left, just as the picture shows here with this river channel here. So, um, you know, some other kind of break lines you might find uh, where you have a change in depth is 
A weed line is also a brake line, and it's the brake line that shows us this structure. All right, we have three kinds of structures in the natural lake. They're the most common structures we'll find. Will be bars, humps, and saddles. Let's take a look at a uh, bar here. And a bar is just where you've got the brake line comes out and it's going to form some kind of a point. It's going to be different from the surrounding area. Some bars may have just one point on it. Some bars may have multiple points on it and it, they could be all different. You got a little bar over here, a little point, and then it comes out to a longer point. You could have one bar that has several fingers off of it. Uh, bars come in all different kinds of shapes and sizes. Um, when you're looking at a contour map, uh, here's a classic example of what a bar would look like in a contour map, as shown here. Uh, here's another picture of a contour map where the, you know I picked this one out because it this one really stands out like a sore thumb on where the bar where the structures are. It's a remember, the structure is the shape or features of the bottom different from the surrounding bottom area here. And you can see here that you have uh, uh, several uh, very classic, well-built bars that go uh, run out here. All right, now another buck says here, when fish move or migrate on structure, they will either pause or stop at a break in the structure. So what are breaks? Breaks are what we talked earlier, a, a stump, rock, sunken boat, a tree, a log, etc. Breaks are not the bottom. Breaks are things that are found on the bottom or located on the bottom. And unfortunately, 75 to 95 percent of the fishermen mistaken breaks as structure. They'll call that stump structure, that rock structure, the tree structure. No, these are breaks. They're things that are found on the bottom. And if the, these breaks are located on structure, then the fish may use them when they migrate on structure. And they could be worth fishing if they're located on structure. But if you take that stump and you put it way up on a flat, it's just a stump. It's nothing more. You take a pile of rocks and you put it way up on a flat, it's not on structure. It's just a pile of rocks. But if you take these, this stump and this pile of rocks, these breaks, and put them on structure, and they're associated close to the brake line or on the brake line or close enough to the brake line where the fish can see them, then these brakes are going to be worthwhile fishing. And it's the key where we're going to find the fish most of the time on the structure. They will pause. Let's look at this again. When fish move or migrate on structure, they will either pause or stop at a break in the structure. The brakes are the keys to where you and I are going to fish these structures the brake lines and the brakes. Right now, getting back to uh, the structures here, uh, some structures can be made up of a single brake line or multiple brake lines as shown here. All right, let's take a look at this structure here. We got a nice bar that comes out here and there's a dock on the shore over there. And that dock is always known to be a hot spot. Well, let's see why that dock is a hot spot. The fish come out and they hit this structure, they hit the brake line, they hit the pile of rocks, and then they migrate down that brake line, and if the weather and water conditions allow them to go further, they go to the stump or the log over there and they'll stop and pause at that brake. And then if that stump is close enough to that rock pile, they'll move to that rock pile. And if the weather and water conditions allow them to go further in their migration, they'll move down to that uh, stump. And then that stump is really close to the end of the dock, and then they could hit that dock. That's why the dock in this case is considered a hot spot at times, because it's in the migration path of the fish. But if you took that stump and that rock pile and you took them off structure, way up on a flat, it's nothing more than a stump or rock pile. You put these brakes on structure, that's what then you want to fish them. As we said, the fish will eat, pause or stop at a break on the structure. All right, now getting back to the structure. Uh, structures can uh, 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 consist of one brake line or multiple brake lines. And in this case here, some brake lines may have a 
a, a short increase in depth, where some brake lines will have a rapid increase in depth. Some may be a little bit uh, uh, harder for us to locate on the water. They may only change depth of a foot, but you got, but it, but it's pretty quick where it's going to create a brake line. And some brake lines may have a great increase in depth. They're going to be really easy for us to see out there. But in both cases, you've got a brake line here. As I said earlier, you could have some structures that have multiple brake lines. As shown here, we have this structure has three distinct brake lines. But regardless of the structure, the very last brake line into the deepest water in the area, that last brake line is also known as the drop-off. This drop-off is an important brake line because it's where the fish make contact on that structure. When they leave their deep water sanctuary, the first thing they see, the, the closest brake line to them is going to be that drop-off. Now we're going to talk about, now, now when a fish do see this drop-off here, uh, back in the basic movements of the fish, we said there's shallow water and deep water. Shallow water is anything from the shoreline of, of surface down to a depth of 8 to 10 feet, and deep water is anything deeper than 8 to 10 feet. Now if you have a drop-off that occurs in shell, you know, shallow water, you know, like 9 feet here, it's not going to be a very good structure. Uh, uh, the, as we said, the home of the fish is deep water. How far they move on structure, how shallow they go, is determined by the weather and water conditions. Um, to get the school of big adult fish to move that shallow doesn't happen very often to have that whole school move the nine feet. So if you have a shallow drop-off, once again that drop-off is the, is the last break line of that structure, the first one that the fish sees, if that drop-off occurs in a shallower depth, it's not going to be a very good structure. Now it's pretty hard to say what the most ideal depth is. It depends on the makeup of the lake and the water color. But a rough, rough idea, the deeper the drop off, the better the structure will be. Typically you like to see a drop off at at least 20 feet, 25 feet. And the deeper the drop off, the better the structure usually is. All right, another buck says here, Fish will not cross a flat that is void of any breaks or break lines. They, you know, it's, once again, going back to a break line, you know, think of a break line as like a roadway, a highways for the fish. Just like we've got roads we go on, you know, roads in the streets are like our break lines. And that's how the fish react to a break line in the water. I mean, they've got, that's their roads, are these break lines. And when there's a flat, there's no break road there, there's no brake line there, nothing that these fish can use to guide them across that, across that flat. Now, not all structures are productive. Let's take a look over here. We've got this shoreline bar here. Now, first we may go out there and we say, oh boy, we got a great looking bar here. But then we notice that the deepest water in the area is quite some distance away from this bar here. There's a big flat between the bar and the deepest water in the area. And this bar in this structure here, you're not going to see a school of big adult fish use this bar. Sure, you might find some straggler fish, yearling fish on this bar, but not the school of fish. The only way this school of fish may ever use this bar as structure are if you had brakes that could guide the fish across the flat. Let's take now, let's put some brakes on there. Uh, right at the edge of the deep water, we got a rock pile there. That's where the fish will make contact. Now, now they need something to guide them across that flat for that bar to be productive. Now say that, that they make it to the rock pile and they see the sunken boat there. And if it was close enough where the fish could see it, they could then migrate, move to that sunken boat. And then if the stump is close enough, they can go over to the stump. And then they could possibly go make it to the bar, uh, as shown here. Now that shoreline bar may be productive. And I've seen it happen, uh, or I've heard it happen quite often that all of a sudden you've you got a bar and it's productive. You go there year after year, you're catching fish. And then all of a sudden one year you go there and you find out that that bar isn't productive anymore. Well, what more than likely what happened is in this scenario here, you've got these brakes going across that flat and say that stump rotted away or it, it, it broke off or whatever. And now there's nothing to lead the fish across that flat. So now that bar becomes a dead end. It is not used by the school of adult fish anymore. 
Now, this is another buck says here. This is one of the most important buck says here when it comes to structure. Good productive structure will have immediate access to the deepest water in the area. Period. Got to read that again. It's so important. Good, good productive structure will have immediate access to the deepest water in the area. You find, you find structures that have immediate access to the deepest water in the area, you're more than likely going to have a very productive structure. Let's take a look at this. Here we have a shoreline. We've got a couple of bars. You know, the very first bar here is very well pronounced. Nice bar. You've got a nice point at the end of it. And then you got another bar just down from it. About the same thing. Nice point to the end of it. Well, looking at the map here, it's pretty easy to see which bar we're going to spend our time fishing. It's the bar that has immediate access to the deepest water in the area, which is going to be the bar on the right there. Uh, bar on the left there that does not have immediate access to deepest water, you could have some straggler fish on it, but the school of adult fish is going to be on that bar that has the uh, deepest water, immediate access to the deepest water in the area. Very important to find productive structure. All right, now we've got many different kinds of structures. Uh, we, in natural lakes, we're going to find bars, humps, and saddles. It's pretty clear cut in natural lakes. These are the three structures you're going to find. In man made lakes, we've got 12, 14, 15 structures. We've got a lot more structures. But let's take a look at the most common structures we're going to find in natural lakes, which are going to be bars, humps, and saddles. Um, bars, you know, we, we, we showed you earlier, it, uh, as we said earlier, bars can come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. You could have uh, uh, bars with many fingers on it, with one finger on it. Uh, you can have a big, wide bar. You can have long, narrow bars. Uh, bars are pretty clear-cut structures, but you want to find them. The best productive ones are going to be ones that have the access to the deepest water in the area that you're fishing. Then the next structure are going to be humps. Um, and some lakes may have a few humps, some lakes may have a lot of humps. You could have some humps that are shallow, some humps that are a little bit uh, medium depth water, and some humps that are going to be real deep. Here's the counter uh, map showing a lake that has a ton of humps on it. Um, uh, but when you're talking about humps now, um, the fish will not migrate down the backside of a hump. You know, when the fish leave their deep water sanctuary, and if they you know, migrate towards the shallows, their objective is to go shallower. And when they hit a, see a hump like this, the hump becomes a dead end to the fish. They won't ever go down the back side of the hump. You know, if you had to look at this from a fish's perspective, if a fish could think or say something, he'd get to the top of the hump and his, if he wants to migrate, he wants to go shallower, so he wouldn't go down the back side of a hump because to him, he's, the objective of the migration is to go shallower. So the top of the hump is going to become a dead end. And uh, we'll talk more about this in presentation, the lures about uh, humps. Um, but real quick here, you know, when we're talking about the largemouth bass, for it to be productive, a good hump all year round, it needs to go to the shallows, uh, which is a, a depth of 8 to 10 feet or shallower. If you have deeper humps that are connected to the structure, they could be productive for uh, bass if they don't want to go all the way to the shallows. And of course, your, your species uh, that are you know, commonly you know, in deeper water a lot of the times, like your northerns, walleyes, and muskies will use a deeper hump. But in the case of largemouth bass, you want to be fishing a structure that has the hump goes all the way to the shallows. But we'll talk more about that later on in the workshop. All right, and then our uh, next uh, structure that we'll commonly find on natural lakes are a saddle. And a saddle is where you have uh, two structures, like shown in. in in this uh, slide here, you've got a shoreline bar and you got a bar coming off a hump. The area in the middle is a saddle. And it uh, saddles also where you have two deep, deep water holes coming together in that spot in the center is a saddle. It creates a structure situation. And you know, saddles, you can have some species of fish, especially like walleyes, northerns, and smallmouth, uh, quite times uh, 
the, the saddle will be a great structure situation for those species of fish. Uh, here's a, a slide of a contour map where you have two deep holes come together and right in between them it creates that saddle. Uh, here's another structure. This is uh, for those of you familiar with the Midwest uh, Madison area. This is Lake Mendota. This is a uh, you got a shoreline bar and then you got a hump and right in between the two you've got this saddle. Um, I've got many a fish off that structure too. Uh, uh, Northern's up to uh, 42 inches and uh, walleye's up to 25 inches off that structure. But you got a structure situation. Uh, so in natural lakes you're going to find uh, bars, humps, and saddles are your main structures you'll find in natural lakes. It's pretty clear cut for natural lakes. Now when you're talking about reservoirs, which are man-made lakes, you'll find the same structures in a natural lake, bars, humps, and saddles, but you're going to find various uh, additional structures, such as a dam, a causeway, which is a road going across the lake, a submerged road beds could be excellent structures. Submerged fence row or hedgeway, a slide, uh, especially in a you know real steep uh, highland type of reservoir, where there's like a rock rock slide or a mud slide, it, it's going to create a bar. You got steep shorelines and reservoirs. Uh, you've got feeder stream cuts. You got where two channels come together. Let's take a look at some of these reservoirs. More common. Uh, uh, structures you'll find in man-made lakes and reservoirs. As we said earlier, dam. Uh, it could be some great structure situations you can find at a dam. You've got the riprap, you've got the rock going all the way down. Uh, when you find a structure like a dam, you want to see where the main channel goes up to the shoreline of that dam. and. Uh, you know, the, as we said, the home of fish is deep water, so that fish, the migration route is going to start usually out of that channel. And whenever that, where that channel meets the dam, the ripper up there, that's where you want to concentrate your efforts on fishing. Uh, here's a causeway, which is a road crossing the lake. Uh, as you can see where the channel was too. So, uh, a lot of times they'll divert the channel uh, uh, through the bridge of the causeway. So look at your contour maps. and where the old channel hit the causeway and you got a structure situation there that's where you want to fish but dams and causeways could be great structure situations in a reservoir for us to look at. As we said earlier another structure situation is a slide or a wash. Uh, these are more commonly found in you know a highland type of reservoir where you have very steep shorelines uh, and the structures are very steep but You'll have this wash, this rock slide or mud slide come down, create a bar. You have that kind of structure situation. Uh, saddles, as we talked about earlier. Um, and very good productive structures and reservoirs are going to be your side feeder cuts, where you've got the main channel, and then you've got a side feeder cut channel. Well, it's, it's, that's, you've got the perfect break line structure situation for those fish to go towards the shallows. Uh, we're going to talk more uh, in detail about this in a bit here. Uh, another excellent structure situation in the reservoir is submerged road beds. Uh, boy, some great catches could be made on these submerged road beds. Most of these road beds have got very distinct, good break lines, and it's just a magnet for the fish, you know. And uh, especially the road beds that cross the, that go all the way to the main channel. The fish have got a path of structure situation that takes them from the deepest water in the area, the main channel, all the way to the shoreline. Uh, submerged roadbed is excellent structure situation here. And just like in natural lakes, you'll find uh, all kind of various bars and reservoirs, you know, wide sweeping bars, uh, steep shorelines. Um, and then in a reservoir, you'll have uh, where a uh, channel splits You'll have a bar that's created where a channel splits. A great structure situation you'll find there too. All right, uh, Buck says, uh, if I expect to catch more and bigger fish consistently, I must use structure as my guide to where the fish will be found. Then I must use the brakes and brake lines on or connected to it to pinpoint the fish. That's the key to where we're, where we're going to find a fish. We're gonna, we always have to use structure as our guide where the fish are going to be found. 
then we concentrate our efforts on the brake lines and the brakes that are on that structure. All right, now let's uh, take a look and tell you what structures are better than other structures or what makes a good structure a very productive structure. We said earlier that a very productive structure must have immediate access to the deepest water in the area. And the drop off, you know, we got to see where the, the first spot that fish hits on that structure is going to be the drop off. And the deeper the drop off, that's the one he's going to hit for first. So let's take a quick look at this example here. We've got a, 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 a bar that has four fingers on it. There's a finger at A, B, C, and D. I've got the depths on there. Bar A breaks at 12 feet down to 16 feet, and then it tapers to 20, 22. B is at 14 feet, then it goes to 19 feet, then it goes to 22 and 28 feet. C, 12 feet, breaks to 17 feet, and then it slopes off to 20 and 24 feet. And D breaks at 14 feet to 16 feet, and then 20 to 22 feet. Now looking at this, let's see where we have the deepest water off of these four points, bars. And it's uh, B, it breaks down to 28 feet. That's the deepest uh, water in the area. And the break line itself, well A is at 12 feet, and C is at 12 feet, B and D are at 14 feet. Um, and uh, A breaks a, a 4 feet, 12 to 16 feet. B breaks 5 feet, 14 to 19 feet. C also breaks 5 foot, 12 foot to 17 foot. And D breaks 2 feet, 14 feet to 16 feet. So ideally, the contact point, the most ideal contact point on a structure is going to be the deepest, sharpest break into the deepest water in the area. And in this picture here, that's point B. It's 14 feet, it's the deepest, and it breaks 5 feet, 14 to 19 feet, it breaks the sharpest, and it breaks into 28 feet of water into the deepest water in the area. So the contact point will always be the deepest and the sharpest break into the deepest water in the area. So when we're fishing this structure here, uh, you know, we want to check out all the fingers, A, B, and C, or D, to see if any fish are moving. We don't find any fish moving, then we have to wait for the fish to move. Where are we going to spend all of our time? We're going to put that anchor down on point B and sit there and wait for the fish to come to us. Because when the new fish move on this structure, they're going to show up at finger B on this structure. All right, now we're going to go over a, a structure situation, which is going to pretty much wrap up everything we I've said so far about how fish move on structure and we call this structure situation a delta situation structure situation and this is what a delta looks like a delta situation you'll find in in reservoirs um, uh, typically some flat land and lowland reservoirs the most common uh, reservoirs that have delta situations are your uh, reservoirs on the uh, Tennessee Val Valley uh, 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 stream of lakes, which is Kentucky Lake, uh, Chickamauga, um, can't recall the rest of them. Uh, also off of uh, the Cumberland uh, River system, which is like Barkley and Old Hickory Lake. But a delta situation is where, as you can see here, you've got shoreline bars that drop off into a flat, you, and sometimes this flat is pretty long. Sometimes it's you know not as long, but in many cases it's a pretty wide flat. And then you, before you hit the main channel, and on each side of the main channel you're going to have a hump, and that hump's cr been created through you know river many years of that river being there. You've got growth on the edge of the river channel, and over the years it just you know creates more growth and creates these humps. But this is what a classic delta structure situation looks like. Now we talked about humps. We said that fish will migrate to the top of the hump and they won't go down the back side of a hump. And that hump becomes a dead end. So when you see a delta situation like this, you know, the shoreline bars aren't going to be very productive because they've got that flat between the shoreline bar and the main channel. And that delta, which we call a hump on the main channel, fish won't 
migrate down the back side of the main channel. Uh, here's what a, uh, a delta situation typically looks like. You'll see the main channel and you'll see these ridges or humps show up on the main channel. Uh, here's an actual contour map of, uh, I think this is Chickamauga Lake, a classic uh, a delta reservoir. Uh, you can see here that on the uh, one side, uh, you can clearly see the humps along the main channel. On the uh, other side here, it swings in pretty close to shore, but you still see some humps over there. Here's another picture here. This is Gunnersville Lake, a very well-known bass lake. Many of the tournaments are held out there. This is another classic reservoir with delta situations. And here's uh, Navionics contour map where you can see clearly see the, the delta humps along the edge of the main channel there. So then you got to ask yourself, well, how are these fish going to get to the, what are the best structures of fish in these delta situations? You can see here it's going to be wherever you have a side feeder channel hits that main channel, you're going to have an interruption. You've got a path now for these fish to get from the main channel to the shoreline bars here. Now here's what that situation looks like here. You've got our shoreline bars, you got the flat, and then you got the delta hump, and you got the main channel. But that side channel now, you've got a brake line, you've got a path, a route for these fish when they get active to leave their deep water sanctuary, that main channel, now they've got a path to get to the shoreline bars here. And if we're fishing these uh, shoreline, uh, this structure situation, we want to start by fishing the shoreline bars. We don't find any fish there, then we move a little deeper. We fish the brake line along the side feeder channel. And then we fish the bars that are created where the side feeder channel meets the main channel. Um, but that's the key to fishing these delta reservoirs is finding where the <clears throat> side feeder stream channels are. Here's a picture of a contour map. Uh, I think this is Gunnersville again and you can see here where that side feeder channel cuts through here. Now you've got a path for these fish to go up to, to the shallows here. Uh, here's another picture here. Uh, you can see your, your delta humps along that main channel and boy right where that side feeder channel hits the main channel that's where we, excellent structure situation, that's where we want to spend a lot of our time fishing. All right, now, the only way to fish a structure correctly is to know what you are trying to accomplish with your lures or bait. Uh, there's so many people that read Buck's material, they know it inside out, but they get on the water, they tend to get lost and just uh, choke. Now you have to always remember, I'm out of a structure situation here. What am I trying to accomplish? I've got a structure here. I, I, you need to fish it, obviously. You gotta, we're going to talk a lot about that in a lot of detail in the next uh, workshop here, which is presentation of lures. But you always got to keep in mind when you're looking at a structure situation, you're on the water, how am I going to control my depth and speed, which we talked about in an er earlier classroom. We've got to control our depth and speed if we want to catch that fish. We're going to go over that in the next uh, uh, workshop here on presentation of lures. Uh, let's just take a look at a couple of structure slides here. Um, here's a structure. Uh, we have got a shoreline bar and then you got a, a couple of humps and you got saddles. You got uh, all three common structures you'll find in natural lake here. Uh, here's a uh, Another uh, structure situation, uh, this is I believe Rathbun Lake in uh, Iowa. We never fished the lake before. We, uh, my son Casey and I went there about three or four years ago. First time ever on the lake, found it had excellent watercolor. We used structure as our guide, fishing these uh, bars here. And as you can see in this bar, in this uh, contour map here, where do we want to spend our time fishing? The bar that goes all the way to the deepest water in the area, as you can see right there. And fishing this lake for the very first time using structures or a guide, we got the results here. We got this 31-inch uh, walleye right off that structure, off that bar, uh, right where it went into the main channel here. And you got to use structure as your guide when you're on the water fishing, just like Buck said here. We, got in, we want to focus on the brakes, brake lines and the brakes on that structure. 
And Buck says, you can have so-called structure and no fish, but you cannot have fish without structure. You always want to be fish in structure. And there's the man himself, Mr. Perry, with a uh, big smallmouth bass. Uh, not sure where that picture was taken, but uh, uh, it's a classic picture of Buck. All right, now a quick summation of what we said so far about structure. Productive structures will go from the shallows to the deepest water in the area. you got to remember that. That's the biggest key to fishing structure. Productive structures will go from the shallows to the deepest water in the area. Productive structures must have immediate access to the deepest water in the area. This is so true, especially for the big bass in the lake. Um, fish will pause or stop at a break on the structure. We want to be fishing at on the break lines and the breaks that are on that structure. But remember, those breaks have to be on structure. If that break is up on a flat, it's nothing more than a flat, uh, than, a, than, a, than a, a log or a stump. Put that log or a stump on structure. That was, that's what you want to fish. Fish will pause or stop at a break on the structure. That's the key where to find the fish on structure. Fish in the breaks and the break lines. Uh, next thing here. Fish will not cross a flat void of breaks or break lines. It's a flat. It's not a structure. Structure is the shape or features of the bottom different from the surrounding area. Don't waste your time fishing a flat. I mean, fish could be there, but you're going to find small straggler fish. We're looking again for the school of big adult fish. The school of big adult fish are using structure as their guide. Not, you're fishing these shallow flats, you could get some small bass, you can get year, yearling fish on there. But fish will not cross a flat void of breaks and break lines. And last here is the drop off. We said that the drop off is the very last break line to the deepest water in the area. And if that drop off is too shallow, it won't be used by the fish very often. The deeper the drop off, the better chances of, of that structure producing for you. All right, now let's go into questions you may ask. You did not say much about currents in a body of water, but how do you look at them or how do you work them? A, a current uh, is uh, pretty much the same as a brake line. It's a change. Uh, in the case, we don't, depending on a current, you're not necessarily having a change in depth, but you have a change in uh, just like a line. Uh, it's a, like a current brake line. We treat it just like a brake line as well too. It, it's something that the fish can relate to. Um, so we work at uh, a current brake line pretty much just like a brake line. But if that current uh, brake line has got to be up on structure for it to be productive. Alright, next question here. In studying the different types of structures, and especially the delta, I kept asking myself if the fish return to the main channel every trip to the shallows. Let's say they had moved up a cut and then moved alongside of the feeder channel to the cove or to the bar along the shoreline. Then they stay started back, where they go all the way back to the main channel. It depends on the weather and water conditions. If you had very uh, stable weather and water conditions for many days, yeah, those fish sanctuary may be in the side feeder channel. It happens all the time. The more stable conditions are, that sanctuary will move move a little uh, shallower or you know not as deep, I should say. Uh, but as soon as you get a bad weather condition or water condition, or boom, like a cold front goes through, those fish are going to move back to their deep water sanctuary again. But uh, yes, if the weather's stable, those fish new sanctuary could be in that side feeder cut. But once again, you get a bad weather condition, they're going to be back out to that deep water sanctuary in the main channel. Uh, you know, as shown here in the slide here, you got a real stable weather here for many days. Instead of going back to the main channel, they can take up their sanctuary in the side feeder channel. But as soon as the cold front goes through or you have a severe weather condition, those fish sanctuary will drop back to that main channel. When you were talking about fish moving along a brake line, you said he would not go downhill on it. I'm not sure what you meant by this. All right, let's take a look at this. Um, when we said the hump, 
it becomes a dead end. The fish won't go down the backside of a hump. His, when he migrates and wants to move shallower, he wants to move shallower. He's not going to go to top of the hump soon and become a dead end for him. Uh, and it also holds true for a brake line. Uh, great question. Let's look at this lake over here, this uh, bar. We've got a bar here, and say the fish come up and they hit contact the bar and this point B. It's at 14 feet. Now you can see the contact point is right at there, point B. So which way are the fish going to migrate on this structure now? Well, if they go to the right towards point C, it gets deeper at 18 feet there. Now if they go to the uh, left towards point A, it gets shallower at 11 feet. So when the fish, the contact point, we're going to say the deep water is coming off of point B, they're going to go, in, if they migrate shallower, they're going to go on a break line towards point A and not C. So when the, once again, the objection of the fish, when they move and migrate, and if the weather allows them to go shallower, they hit that structure, going, going to the right to point C isn't getting shallower for them, it's going to point A. And we're going to talk more about this when we talk about uh, mapping and interpretation part of this, part of the workshop here. And here's another slide of a hump again. That hump's going to become a dead end. The fish will go to the, migrate to the top of the hump, and that's as far as it can go. They're not going to go down the back side of the hump because that's going deeper. Uh, we're going to talk more about this, like I said, when we get to uh, mapping interpretation part of uh, the workshop. All right, well, that wraps up structure. Hopefully, you guys know what structure is. When you watch these shows on TV, it drives me crazy what they call structure. A structure again is the shape or features of the bottom different from the surrounding bottom area. Um, there's a, I've got a link below here. Um, uh, it's uh, these guys on YouTube uh, a few years back did an excellent video on telling you what structure is. I got the link below. Check it out. These guys did a fantastic job doing this. Check that out and uh, stay tuned for the next part of the workshop when we will talk about uh, presentation of lures. <laughs> Thanks for watching.